Um, my task today was to talk about um, travelling fellowship options for women in orthopaedics. Um, and as we've just heard from Dawn and I, I found out in my research, um, therefore I've popped in brackets, there's not really any specific um, travelling fellowship opportunities specifically for women. Um, what I hope to do today with my talk, though, is to inspire many or, or some or even just one of you listening tonight or today or wherever you are uh, to apply for a travelling fellowship and uh, to replace these brackets with an exclamation mark because fellowship opportunities, travelling fellowships are available and uh, it would be fantastic to have women um, doing more of those. Um, so why do a fel travelling fellowship? Um, I'm now also having problems advancing my screen. Um, I'll just try and reshare that. There we go. So this slide I've taken from the American Orthopedic Association um, for fellowship objectives, which really apply to all fellowships and traveling fellowships. So the objectives stated here are um, many things that I about tonight, develop the fellows' leadership skills, connect fellows with orthopaedic leaders and um, fellow alumni, prepare fellows for the greater challenges of leading and improving the specialty. And I've just added there uh, by promoting diversity to confront critical issues impacting the specialty and also visible role, also my addition to the slide here. So my background and qualifications for giving this presentation this evening, um, in 2019, I travelled as an Australian Orthopaedic Association, NZ Orthopaedic Association, um, travelling fellow with the ACR Orthopaedic Association. Um, pictured here with my uh, two fellow travelling fellows, Rupesh from New Zealand and Alvin from Australia. Um, so I nearly didn't apply for the Shelt Fellowship when a mentor of mine suggested that I did. So there was some negative self-talk, which maybe we were all a little bit familiar with. Um, I'm too old. Well, I actually wasn't for this fellowship, although there are specific junior travelling fellowships um, with an age which is generally under 45. I haven't got time. Well, I'd really recommend making the time well worth it. I don't do research. Well, I, I don't. It's fantastic if you do research and a great opportunity to travel and present. But if you present on a topic of something that you find interesting and they won't choose me. Well, they did. So, and I'm very glad I was selected as well. Um, so during the travelling fellowship over two weeks, um, we travelled to four different countries. And in two of these countries, we met up with the Junior ASEAN Orthopaedic Association Junior Travelling Fellows. And we're all pictured here. And you'll see a familiar figure, um, Dr. Sonali, who will be speaking shortly after me this evening. So the other travelling fellows were from the Philippines, Indonesia, Myanmar, and Thailand. Um, during the visits, we visited hospitals. We each gave presentations, did quite a bit of sightseeing and uh, also ate some amazing food. So the first country was Brunei. And uh, here I am again with Dr. Sonali and also Dr. Liza Ishak, who was going to become the first locally trained, the second orthopedic, um, female orthopedic surgeon in, in Brunei. So my two presentation topics were on musculoskeletal health and uh, also on in Brunei. Um, so I look back in preparing, preparing this talk over my presentation, and I've chosen one slide which I think emphasises the value of female orthopaedic surgeons doing a travelling fellowship. Um, and the slide was titled, How Do We Approach Change? And uh, the, first, the first dot point was leadership. So to all of you listening today, yes, you are a leader. Um, role models. We can't be what we can't see. So to be doing traveling fellowships, we are really becoming role models to all younger um, 
potential orthopaedic surgeons. Um, mentors, so you can support and encourage other young women surgeons to become involved and also support and training. So use the opportunity to engage with the wider orthopaedic community. We then travelled on to Myanmar, where we did do some orthopaedics as well as just eating some amazing food. We visited the hospitals there. Um, met up in Malaysia. There's some familiar faces, Dr. Aslina and Dr. Rui. You may, um, may be listening tonight or people who have worked with, in Malaysia. Um, and then finished off in Indonesia at the combined ASEAN and uh, Indonesian Orthopedic Association. And uh, the fellows all together again there and receiving my fellowship award and uh, with Dr Chai, who was the previous president of the ASEAN Orthopaedic Association. Um, so I've just included here um, really for more demonstration than an exhaustive list. Um, some of the travelling fellowships are available and some Dawn has referred to in her previous talk. Um, in particular, the Ruth Jackson Society website really does have a long list of um, travelling fellowships which are available around the world. Um, many of the fellowships also are reciprocal and I certainly hope one day to hope that host the next group of ASEAN travelling fellows here in Australia. Um, so to summarise, um, travelling fellowships are available for all orthopaedic surgeons, but it is so important for women to be involved. And there are many, some as short <clears throat> as one to two, excuse me, one to two weeks. So time doesn't necessarily have to be as big a factor for much longer fellowships. The rewards nevertheless are well worth the investment in time and the benefits will be felt beyond your own experience and certainly beyond your expectations. Um, so thank you, everybody. Um, thank you.